EF Core 10 is getting an interesting new feature that I want to share with you in this video. If you have been using EF Core query filters for the past several years, you probably run into the limitation that you can't define multiple query filters on a single entity. Well, EF Core 10 solves this, and I'm going to demonstrate how in this video and what are all of the gotchas that you have to be aware of. So let's start from the basics. What is a query filter and what does it do? This is a predicate that you can apply to a specific entity and it's going to be automatically converted into SQL whenever you query for this specific entity or table inside of your database. So how you define it is when you're configuring your entity, in this case an order class, you call has query filter and you define your predicate. And common use cases for this are filtering for soft deleted records, tenant based filters, maybe some active inactive flags if you have something like that. So anything that you would typically write in the majority of your EF queries and instead of duplicating that predicate in your queries, you just move it to a query filter. And it's a very powerful feature that I've been using for many years. However, it has a problem that you can't define multiple query filters for a single entity, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So I'm going to run this application. It's orchestrated using dot and Aspire, where I'm running a single SQL Server database as a resource and connecting this to my application. So let's start the application. And I'm just going to send a request using curl to the one API endpoint that I have and you can see my request completes we get back a response containing some orders that I'm seeing inside of this database but what I'm interested in is the distributed trace that we're going to take a look at here and more specifically this span that actually represents my database query so if I go inside and I take a look at the database statement, we can see what is the exact SQL that he of course sent to the database. So it's a typical select statement from the orders table, but note that we have a where expression that checking that is deleted is equal to some value. Now this is actually our query filter. We're just making sure to filter out any soft deleted records in this table. And the record is soft deleted if the is deleted flag is set to true. Now let's say we want to extend our example. I'm going to introduce another query filter on the order entity. And this time I want to check that the tenant ID property, which I have defined on this class, is equal to some value. Now for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to hard code this, but typically you would extract this value at runtime for the current application user and get their tenant ID so that you properly filter out the records that belong to that specific tenant. So let's start the application again, and I'm going to send another request. You can see we get a response back. And this time the response contents are slightly different. There's a record here where the tenant ID is equal to two and the ID of four. This value is now missing from the response because our new query filter is applied. Now, if I take a look at the SQL that's sent to the database, you can see that this time the where statement is filtering based on the tenant ID column. However, the is deleted filter that we had previously is no longer there. So this is the limitation of how query filters currently work in EF Core. Of course, we can get around this by just applying our predicate in the same query filter. So I can define a query filter that filters out any soft deleted records, but also applies the tenant filter on the query. So if I were to run this and we send a request to get back some orders and we take a look at the SQL that's been sent to the database, now you can see that we are properly filtering out soft deleted records and also applying our tenant filter. So this is how you can solve this limitation, but it has one drawback. And that is, what if I want to sometimes ignore a specific part of the query filter? How can I do this? You can do this by saying ignore query filters, and I'm going to call this route orders unfiltered, and let's run the application again. And if I go ahead and send the request to the unfiltered endpoint, this time we get back all of the orders in the database because there is no filtering taking place. And if we take a look at the select statement, we aren't filtering anything on the orders table. And this is because we called ignore query filters and we omitted the one query filters that we have defined. So the current support for query filters is either all or nothing. You are either using all of the query filters that you're defining in one predicate, or you can just ignore all of them. Now being able to do something in between where I apply some query filters and ignore others would be very useful. And we are going to get this in EF10. So let me show you what that's going to look like. To be able to show you how this works, I'll have to move to the preview version of Visual Studio, and this allows me 
to update my project to target.net 10. So I'm going to update the target framework, but we also have to update our NuGet packages. I'll look for the NuGet packages that I currently have, and I want to tick the include pre-release box, and this allows me to install the latest available version of EF Core for SQL Server. I'm going to install the latest preview, and this one was released about two weeks ago, and it's going to give me access to the new features that we have for query filters. So let's go to my database context, and you can see that the old version is still working. I can justify my query filter as before. However, I can now also give my query filter a name. So let's call this the soft deletion filter. And what this allows us to do is to define multiple query filters that have a name. So let's also create a tenant filter on this entity where I'm going to filter out the tenant ID column to some specific value. So let's go ahead and quickly run this. And if I send a request to fetch the orders, it's going to take a couple of moments because I'm running into a cold start and SQL Server isn't yet available. But in the end, we're going to see a distributed trace show up and let's take a look at the SQL. And lo and behold, both our query filters are now applied, even though we configured them separately. Now this gives us greater flexibility when it comes to how we want to ignore any specific filters. So let me show you what we can do. I'm going to copy the orders unfiltered endpoint and the default versions still works. We can call ignore query filters and ignore all of them. However, I'm going to create two more endpoints. I'm going to call this orders all, where I'm going to ignore a specific query filter, the soft deletion filter. And to ignore specific filters, you have to pass in an array containing the filter names that you want to ignore. In the second example, I'm going to say orders, let's call it tenant, for example. And here I want to ignore the tenant filter. So let's test out these two examples and see how they work. So if if I query for orders unfiltered, we get back all of the orders that we have in the database. And if I take a look at the select statement, there is no where expression here. So let's go back to the traces. Next, I'm going to say orders all, and this is the one that ignores the soft deletion filter. However, it applies the tenant based filter. So we won't see any orders that belong to the second tenant. And if we take a look at the select query, there is a where statement here filtering out by the tenant ID column. And lastly, let's also look for orders tenant. And this is going to ignore the tenant filter. So let me go to the traces. Here's our SQL query. And here you see that the soft deletion filter is applied and the tenant based filter is removed. So we now have greater flexibility in terms of how we want to use our query filters. Now, one piece of advice I'd recommend is having some sort of constant for defining your filters. So let's say I create a public static class called order filters and inside of it I'm going to define a constant that is going to represent the soft deletion filter. Let's also do the same for the tenant filter and now instead of hard coding this I can say order filters soft deletion filter and below it I can say order filters tenant filter. Of course I'd want to use the same approach inside of my endpoints. So here, instead of hard coding it, I would use the order filters class to reference the soft deletion filter, and then the same thing to reference the tenant filter. And now my code is more readable, and we're also using the new functionality that is offered by named query filters. If you want to grab the source code for this video and any other video that I posted on this channel, you can do so by subscribing to my Patreon. You're going to find the link to my Patreon page in the description of this video. And if you want to learn more about the of core and an interesting feature that could help you improve application performance, then go ahead and watch this video next. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks a lot for watching this video and until next time, stay awesome.